Hi, Robin. Here we are. Very much indeed in the fitting room of the Viper Theatre. You are going to perform in just one hour. Yeah, and um, how did you like the venue? It's a new venue in Florence, and uh, you've been through a lot of venues, so. I've been through uh, one or two in my time, yeah. I love it, it's really good. Instantly nice uh, vibe when you come in, really good people working here, and it seems to be pretty professional. And I have to say, in Italy, it's really uncommon, I think, to find yeah, a facility like this. I'm, f I'm pleased with it. On your website. <laughs> that is not a commercial. Commercial? They gave me 50 euros to say that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we don't pay much. <laughs> um, yeah. Mm, you've been through a lot of venues and your career is spanning now through 30 years, more or less, from the very beginnings. And uh, your debut album with Cocteau Twins is now 26 years away. And um, 1982, uh, is that correct? Yeah, Garlands? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, we were a bunch of teenagers from Scotland, you know, I was maybe 19. And we got to make our punk rock record when I was a kid, you know. And that was it, we didn't really plan to do anything else. I don't know what was going through our heads, but it was such a big thing to be able to make a record at, at that point. Uh, at that point in time, music took so much more uh, importance than it seems to do nowadays because it, it was really the only interactive entertainment you could have as a teenager. It's the only thing that you could choose, you know, because we, in the UK we had just three channels of TV, you know, and we didn't have video games and the internet and you know all the other things all the other distractions and all the other uh, forms of media that you have now so you know really the 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 records that you bought and listened to and dictated the, the how you wore your hair and you know what clothes you wear and, and who you were as a young teenage person you know and uh yeah it was like that i mean uh, and it was really the most important thing and Nowadays, there's a, uh, a sort of saturation. Uh, music is there for, for young kids. I've got a teenage daughter, you know, and I watch her. Music's sort of important to her, but then so are DVDs and the internet and software and uh, all the other, all the other you know, 200 channels of television and stuff, all the other things that are there that, you know, didn't, you know, weren't there when I was a teenager, so. This is interesting to see it all happening, you know, it's interesting to be part of it all as well. Talking about Garlands, when it came out, um, it, the critics weren't, were not so good about the album, but it stayed uh, on the top positions of the independent charts for quite a long time. Is that right? How, ma how, how did that feel? With the debut album. How would you expect me to remember <laughs> what the critics said about it? I, I have absolutely no recollection at all. Uh, what I do know is that it was, you know, we were just really young and naive and we thought we were just great so it, did, it didn't seem odd to us that the record should be doing really well. We just thought, oh yeah, we like it, it should be doing well. And of course it was. It wasn't until years later that we kind of stepped back and went, oh fuck. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's not easy. You know, when I was, I met lots of other musicians and they're just trying to get a record deal and making demos and things. I'm like, we didn't do that, <laughs> you know. We just sent it to one record company, you know, the one we wanted to be on. And we sent it to John Peel, the, the uh, you know, John Peel, so. You know, it was just, we were very naive and just really believed in ourselves. It's great, but, you know, I saw such a long time ago. You'd li it's like asking me what I did when I was a child, really. Of, uh, it's it's, it's uh, a long way away from me, you know. I've got lots of my own personal recollections. I mean, I consider, for me, that making music and making records over the time span that I've been doing, it's really just like making a diary, you know? It's, it's like, uh, it takes me back to a particular place and time.
that was when I was making that music, you know. And uh, I continue to do that, and it's still like that for me, you know. But you don't kind of really look at your uh, your diary entries and say, oh, that's my favourite diary. I like that diary entry better than that one. These are just it's almost documental, you know, evidence of what I've been doing. But, you know, I don't say which one of my children is my favourite. You know, it's, it's kind of like that. You just you do it, you move on, you do it, you move on. You know, I'd, I'd have absolutely no sense of nostalgia whatsoever. I look back at the records that I made two years ago and I just think, whatever, I'll do another one. You know, I'm not unhappy with them, it's just that they no longer have any relevance to me at all. Whatsoever. Cocteau Twins fans don't like to hear that. You know, and I don't like to say it to them either, but when someone comes to a concert and comes backstage and goes, oh, I treasure's my fantastic thing, and, you know, I'm like, <laughs> great, you know, thank you. You know, because it means something to them because it's representative of something their life. But it, it's, you know, that period of my life is not my happiest, you know. It's, it's, but I don't need to look back there. But I do accept that it, it really seemed to touch an awful lot of people. You know, which is only as I've got older that I'm actually able to accept that and just see, wow. Yeah, it wasn't, it, was, it wasn't by design. It's just chance, you know, it's just a time and a moment and things. I'm not that clever, you know. I, I don't think that, I think that many Cocteau twins uh, think that you are clever, but... Well, you know, uh, no, I, because it would be evident that if that was the case, you know, 10 years after Cocteau Twins break up, uh, you know, not very many people listen to my music, not many people are aware of what I do, not many people follow it. So if they thought I was that clever, then, you know, that wouldn't be the case. You know, people tend to get stuck in, uh, uh, you know, they, uh, I use the word nostalgia, they have a nostalgia for something that's that's past, you know, and you know what, I could probably come and do concerts like this in a place like this and come and play some Cocteau Twins tunes or something and it's like, shoot me, you know. Yeah, it would be like going to Las Vegas. Yeah, you know, or heaven for some people, you know, but, uh, you know, I can't, I kind of quite like Las Vegas, so, <laughs> you know, I, I played a show in Las Vegas once, which was kind of cool. Uh, yeah, but it was like... But yeah. you know, I'm not ready. It's not that's not the time for me to be doing that. You know, if I ever play with Cocteau Twins again, I think it would be fun just to play some of those old songs. You know, for people that want to see it. But right at this moment, it really doesn't interest me. I kind of spend my time doing some of the most interesting work that I've ever done. You know, I've been doing, you know, traveling a lot to places I've never been, producing bands that are new and quite vital. Uh, you know, doing movie soundtracks, doing lots and lots of things that I've not had the opportunity to in my life before uh, as part of a group, you know, and uh, I, just, I wouldn't change that now, you know.